Hello and welcome to an RPG Maker Unite tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make your first event and also how to start the process of eventing. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so to add an event, you just can go to map settings, pick one of your maps on your list here. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to this new map that I made. We're going to edit the map here and we're going to start to add an event. So to do that, you just have to make sure that you're on event here and then you can right click and you can create a new event. Or you can go down here to quick events where you can create like a door, a quick move, which is a transfer. And then you can also do initial placements like I've shown previously with the player. But we're going to go ahead and just create a new one. Now with this new event created, we can see over on the left that it created this event right here. And it created a page one. Now for previous RPG makers, you will probably start to recognize where this is going with page one and things like this. We can give this a name. We can just say this is the NPC. And you can give uh, notes if you want. Note that these notes are expandable. So you can just keep pressing enter to create more space, stuff like that. And then you can see that the event name changed when I named it to, to the play, uh, NPC. From here, real quickly, you can see that these are all the basic settings that you're usually aware of. This is where it starts to link to the outline where you can define what chapter this could be a part of, what section this is a part of. And then we can also load or export templates if you want. Here are your conditions. And then if you scroll down here further, you can see that this is where the image that you're going to use. We don't want to use the main character that we're using. So if you want to choose from characters or actors, if you're used to that term, you can just click right here and you can select from a different actor. I could select uh, this one right here and it would be that person. So then we could also select from an image. And if you do select image, you click on this box here. Now, if you select characters, let me see if that brings it up. No, there's still this little bug here where this doesn't do anything. You have to click on this. But if you do the image, you can actually still click this. But then you can just choose from any of these and it will auto populate correctly. And these are just the images. So let's just say I want this guy. And now he will stay right there. So then, of course, you have the rest of the stuff, which is like what type of movement is it? Along with some other options here, you can turn the walking animation on or off. You can change the priority and then you can vent what kind of trigger to run these event commands. So that kind of leads us to the event commands. Down here is where you are going to set up your actions. These are going to be where your typical events were to the right if you were using previous RPG makers. And in order to create a new event, you're just going to simply right click and say new event. You're going to have the event commands pop up and real simple one is to just do show text. So we'll just do a show text here. You can type in what it what you want it to say. So you could say hello new RPG maker. So we now have an option to set a character. And what I mean by character is that up here, you can see that we have our characters and you can see that we have actors. And so these are the characters that we're actually specifying what they are. And so when you click on a character craft, you can see that the map scene is still staying on and click on the preview and it's still not changing. But what does change is the settings over here. So when you click on this character right here, you're going to start setting settings for that character, right? So you'd set its face icon, its field icon, its picture for busts and stuff like this, as well as its name. And then, so that, that's what you're actually looking for when it says characters. And then when you go down here, back to this page one, and click on this again, you can see that now you can choose from one of those characters. Let's just say craft, for instance. You can also just import on the fly as well. And then we can go like this. We can choose the window to be dim, transparent, just like normal. And then we can just choose the position of the windows. I'm just going to leave it at an initial settings. And so what we're going to do now is we can just play test this out. As long as I have the action button needs to be pressed in order for this to happen, we can now play test this. And when we start, we can just walk over. And when it starts up, we can just walk over to that NPC. We can hit play and you can see that it's going to show the bust, the name associated with the, the character that we chose. And it's going to say, hello, new RPG maker. So we're actually talking to him. That's cool. Yeah, we can just exit this. And basically just remember that you have all these event commands to go over. These are very similar to the ones in RPG maker. I'm some of them might be a little different, like they might be separated a little differently. I'm not that sure on it. Here's where your add on commands would be and stuff like this. So yeah, you'll just have to play around with these event commands, but now you know where to place them at least. 
And again, this is page one. So then if you want to add another page, you can right click and you can say create a new event page. So the important thing to realize with RPG Maker Unite is that the bottom page is what is going to take priority. So if you want to lock out pages, then you need to add conditions. And so I just kind of realizing that you might be new to RPG Maker in general, you might not understand how it works. And so what an event is, is it's basically logical commands that you want to happen. And the trigger is down here. So this is how these events uh, trigger. So for instance, on page one, we have, and you can see that you can associate different things with different pages. I have a different image here versus page two, the different image. And so in page one, you can see that the trigger is going to be when I do an action button. So when I'm up against it and I press action, then it's going to play the text. And then you could have more events. Just I'll just do one, for instance, I'll say, you know, show an animation, you know, and then you could just click one, wait until finished. There's also events like timing wise, you can wait, you can provide a wait one, and this is in frames. So if you wanted one second, you would type in 60 and stuff like this. So this is what page one looks like currently. I basically have a text, I show an animation, and then I wait 60 seconds. Now page two, this has nothing on it. As a matter of fact, it even has a different animation and stuff like this. So you can separate this to be a different logic after this page one plays. For instance, after page one plays, we can then do a switch. Let's just change a switch here, which is under game progression, and then we could simply do control a self switch. We could turn A on, and this would complete this page. And how we complete this page is go to page two, and then we go to conditions here, and we would say a self switch option if A is on. And it's gonna be checking for on by default. There's no on or off or kind of thing. So basically what's gonna happen is when we actually action this one, it's going to then change to page two. And so we can actually test this out just so you know what the logic looks like. And so now that we're here, we can walk over here and you can see that it's playing this one first. We press A on it, we say hi, and then it changed to play or to page two. And so that's what happened there. Now we can't do anything else because we actually haven't set the logic. And so what I'm gonna do is cancel out of here. And you can see that page two was empty, so it didn't play anything else. So you would then continue to add your next things that you want to do, scroll map, you can you know, start a battle, or scene control, battle processing, start a battle, stuff like this. In page one here, the animation, I never selected what animation to play, that's why it didn't play one. So I could select ice, you can also play it, so you can kind of see what it's like. You can change the enemy, change the background if, if you need stuff like this, but that's what it would have played on me if I would have had the it selected. So one quick thing, again, we're on the scene preview because we wanted to preview this animation. I'll just click the scene map to go back to the map here. And then let's just say that I wanted to move it. You can just click on it, the event, and you can move it just like normal. Now it's not gonna be dragging across, just wherever you land it is where it's going to end up. So for instance, if I wanted to do a quick event of a move here, it would pop up right here. You would select what map you wanna to go to. I'll just choose some random one, turn it up, let's just say, and then the spot's gonna be, or I'll just turn it right here and turn it right. Click okay. And that is going to give us the event for a simple move. That, that's what that's gonna do. So you do have those quick events just to keep, be aware of. If you are struggling deleting an event, just realize that you cannot right click and delete an event here. The only way to delete an event is to go over the event and delete it from right there. So that was one issue I was having during beta, but it's simple enough to delete it from right there. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful, at least getting started on placing events, setting up event actions, setting up pages and conditions and things like this. If there's any questions, comments below, the RPG Maker official Discord will get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.